Hello and welcome to Tapping Tips. My name is Katie Walker. I'm an EFT trainer, mentor and practitioner. And each week I bring to you um, an opportunity to show you how we can use emotional freedom techniques, aka tapping, in our day-to-day -day life to allow for that calming of the nervous system so we can continue um, doing what we need to do, showing up as we need to and experiencing life um, with a little less stress. Um, I do caveat by saying if you are really struggling and there's a continual feeling that's just there constantly or a thought or there's a behavior that you just know isn't serving you or anyone else around you, sometimes it can be hard to be doing our own work and we need support. I reach out to um, qualified practitioners when I need support. Sometimes I, I do tap every day myself. Um, but sometimes uh, there's part of me that goes, and no, I ain't going there myself. So I do engage with people that I trust who can help me see stuff that I'm not seeing. So reach out to someone who is an accredited um, certified practitioner who has a trauma um, background, who can handle situations, who can support you through that. So this week, I was actually going to talk to you and start talking about how we can use emotional freedom techniques with our limiting beliefs. So those moments where we have that, oh, there we go again, kind of, I know that I'm not good enough. I know that I'm not worthy. I'm not lovable. I don't deserve it. Um, it might not be as clear as that coming out in those words, but in some way, shape or form. However, I'm not going to do that today because something else came up yesterday, which was, I thought, oh, that's a good, that's a good thing to highlight with, um, with using EFT. So I'll start that next week, working on limiting beliefs. So yesterday um, I went into the city to work and um, I, was pu I pulled into a car park and there were two lanes and on the, the, um, the other lane there was a gentleman who had his door open who was bashing the ticket machine and screaming at the ticket machine and it, hysteria. And I thought, wow, my God, isn't that interesting? I noticed a, a, a reaction myself of one of, of fear because of seeing his kind of um, very um, significant outburst. And I thought to myself, well, I'm going into an environment where I'm around people, I'm working with people, I'm supporting people. If I go in in this dysregulated state, I'm not going to be useful to them. And I'm also going to probably not be as productive as I need to be because my body is in this kind of state of uneasiness. And so I actually used tapping yesterday before I went into the office and I'm going to show you today how I used it for myself and then talk about how that person, that gentleman could have been using it for himself because here's the thing, that ticket machine was not the issue. I'm going to suggest that there's a whole lot of stuff going on in his personal life. Something could have happened at home before he left the house. He was already in a dysregulated or discombobulated state the ticket machine was that moment in time that last straw that something wasn't happening for him where his capacity wasn't such that he could allow for oh the ticket machine's not giving me a ticket or my VIP card is not working something happened that then created this internal um, explosion and it was then externally um, shown and if he took that energy and that state into the workplace, he could be a manager or he, he might not have anyone reporting into him, but he has colleagues. The impact that he would then have in that space, someone could say something small, similar eruption. Um, an employee could be doing something where normally if he was in a calm, regulated state, he could handle that well. His productivity, his ability to perform and his output would be impacted because of his state I felt not only did I feel some fear but I actually felt some serious compassion for that man because I thought geez something's going down in his world and it was it was really sad to see and so when we're able to work on our own stuff how we can then show up for ourselves through the use of emotional freedom techniques to calm whatever is going on in our body to then be able to do what we need to do but the impact on others is going to be really really positive and particularly when we're in a corporate environment unfortunately the expectation is you kind of leave that stuff behind and you come in and you go and perform very hard to do when your system is doing something else your mind might be saying calm down but your body's going 
I normally swear. I was going to swear. It would normally be saying, no, I'm not going to, I'm not calming down. I'm still in that fight flight response. Ah, this is feeling really stressful. And so how that then shows up is, you know, has it has so many knock-on effects for an individual. So let me just show you how I tapped yesterday when I saw that. I pulled up in the car park. I actually now don't care if people see me tapping. It's what I do. And it's, I'm staying in my own lane. That's their business. If they're looking at me going, what is she doing? That's fine. So I sat in my car before I went out and went into the office. And this is what I did. I was going, okay, well, how am I actually feeling? And it was a fear. It was a fear response, seeing his reaction. And I and I do rate it just so I know that as I'm tapping in my and is it actually doing something? So zero to 10 on the fear. It was probably sitting at about a five yesterday. At the moment, I actually don't feel it, but I'm just going to recreate that situation. So fear in the chest, five out of 10. Thinking about and, and what the visual I had in my mind, because we want to have a snapshot in time of what we're focusing in on that is causing us to feel that particular emotion <clears throat> so what I had in my mind was this man pounding the um, ticket machine and the words that kind of aggression that was coming out of his voice so this is what I did we start at the side of the hand and this is where we state the emotion state the problem but even though we're doing that we're still okay and we can still accept ourselves or we can just we can still accept ourselves is the best way to talk about that so I said, even though I feel this fear in my chest, just thinking about that man bashing the machine and his violent tone or his aggressive tone, I still deeply and completely accept myself. And even though I feel this fear in my chest, just thinking about him bashing that machine and his aggressive tone, I can still deeply and completely accept myself. And even though I feel this fear in my chest, just thinking about that man bashing the machine and his aggressive tone, I can still deeply and completely accept myself. So we say it three times and then we go to the top of the head and I'm just going to repeat the emotion that I'm feeling, this fear. Start of the eyebrow, this fear. Side of the eye, this fear. Under the eye, this fear. And under the eye, because I've got glasses on, it's just... It's still because we're um, tapping on the point. It's going to send that vibration still to the acupressure point, but it's the bony part just underneath the eye, under the nose, this fear, under the lip, this fear in my chest, collarbone, this fear in my chest, and then under the arm, this fear. Then I just take a breath, however that comes in, whether it's a deep breath, a shallow breath, I just receive a breath. And then I go, how do I feel? What is that fear doing for me? Is that fear, has it gone up? Has it come down? So yesterday, I think I did two rounds to get myself down to a zero. Um, so what I would be saying to you is that you notice, okay, if there's still an intensity, intensity there on that fear, you would just continue. And maybe the image in the mind has changed and it's not so much the physical component of bashing on the the um the ticket machine but more about his facial expression expressions as he's yelling at the machine just notice what might change in the image the emotion might change from fear to um shame or embarrassment or confusion just notice what is showing up and, and then you just change the words so even though i feel this confusion and i feel it in my stomach just thinking about the look on his face as he's screaming at the machine I still deeply and completely accept myself and just keep working on that one particular thing. What that enabled me to do yesterday was to go into the work environment that I was in to then be able to be productive and I was productive to be able to have meetings with people, to be able to work with them, to be able to hold the space for them. Had I not, it could have been a very different story. I could have, my body was continually in that moment or my mind was still thinking about that moment, which then doesn't allow my higher functioning brain to do what it needs to do and to show up and to to um, really do the work I needed to do. So if I was him, let's just work on that. If if that was me and some shit went down in the household before I started, or it might not have even been that that morning, but there's been a build up of something, and my outburst with that was that, then I would be again in in the car, pull up in the car. Or when I had a moment of just quiet time reflecting back 
on that moment. Now, in that moment, clearly there was a, some anger or rage coming out. But after we express ourselves through that moment, it could be some shame and embarrassment that we're feeling. Now, because he was in such a state, I'm not saying that he would be able to pause and start to do tapping because that part of him, that amygdala, the fight flight part of us that goes, that that's sending those signals to have that reaction is already offline it will, or is already um, out of control. So the ability for his higher part of his brain to be there and go, okay, let's stop this and start tapping probably a bit too late. He's already in it. However, he can do afterwards. And so if you can imagine sitting in the car and you're like, oh my God, what did I just do? How did I just behave? <clears throat> All this shame and embarrassment. So again, we go through the same process. Let's choose embarrassment, for example. Rate the embarrassment, zero to 10. How embarrassed do I feel in this moment thinking about what I just did? Eight out of 10. Where is it? Where am I noticing it in my body? It's in my stomach. Thinking about losing control, smacking the crap out of the um, ticketing machine and screaming. Here's how we'd roll. Even though I feel this embarrassment in my stomach, just thinking about what I just did. Oh, it's cringeworthy. Smacking the crap out of that machine and screaming hysterically. I can still deeply and completely accept myself or not even deeply and completely. Maybe it's just, I just accept this is just where I'm at right now. Well, this is just how it is. I can still accept that this is just where it's at. And even though I feel this embarrassment in my stomach, just thinking about what just happened. Oh my goodness. Smacking the crap out of the machine. Raging out. Hysterically screaming. I can still accept this is just where I'm at right now. And even though I feel this embarrassment. And I feel it in my stomach. Just thinking about how I just reacted to that ticketing machine. Bashing it hitting the crap out of it, screaming hysterically. The other way um, for the end of that, the statement, the acceptance statement, which is what we call it, it, perhaps it's I'm open to the possibility. I'm open to the possibility that I can still accept myself. Open to the possibility when it comes to shame and embarrassment. And then once we say it three times, we go to the top of the head, this embarrassment, side of the eyebrow, this embarrassment, side of the eye, this embarrassment. Under the eye, this embarrassment. Under the nose, this embarrassment in my stomach. Under the lip, this embarrassment in my stomach. Collarbone, this embarrassment. Under the arm, this embarrassment. And again, coming back to the side of the hand, just receiving the breath, noticing, has the embarrassment gone down? Repeating it, if it's still embarrassment, thinking about it narrowing it down to specifically what it is maybe it's the fact that that you're hitting the machine or and and obviously it's not necessarily the machine i'm talking about but this is the example i'm giving you it could just be screaming at someone or throwing something down what is it that's in your mind's eye that is creating that emotion of embarrassment so keep repeating that until it comes down to two or below because then you're going to notice that you can continue doing what you need to do in that that day you might come back to it at the end of the day and there could be some another element to it. I just feel sad. I feel really, um, uh, again, maybe some shame or I just feel guilty. So just notice in those moments when you reflect back on an incident that's happened, what is showing up for you now? The emotion, rate it zero to 10, where it is in the body, if it's showing up in the body and what specifically you're focusing in on. And I'm telling you, as we calm our body down, our nervous system down by doing what we're doing with emotional freedom techniques, then we can continue. We can be in the present moment. We can connect with others. We're not then taken off back into that moment in time or the emotional state taking over so we can't then function as we need to. So I hope that has been useful. If you want to know more, please go to my website, www.katiewalkereft.com reach out to me, hello at katiewalkereft.com for a free consult to learn more, hear more about this, how you might apply it in your own life. Um, and next week I will be talking about how we look at limiting beliefs and how they show up and how they have a massive impact in our life, on our lives as well. So all the best and I'll see you soon. Take care.